Hey Cochran, hi, good afternoon. Jody here from Alchemy Yoga, which we're calling Alchemy Online now because that's uh, what we are. So sorry about last week or the week before, there was a bit of a, a mishap with um, us connecting with you guys. That was totally our fault. So thank you for being here today. We can see that there's a few of you on here. Um, maybe it's just Mr. Jensen and his kids again. I'm not sure. <laughs> But regardless, I'm happy to teach you guys a class today that's about 30 to 35 minutes long. Um, I feel like for most of us, uh, speaking for myself for sure, we've had lots of sedentary time and lots of time to just relax and chill out. So I'm going to bring a little bit of vigor to today's practice so that we can kind of break through some of the stagnation that maybe you're feeling um, just kind of being stuck at home and, and not kind of getting out and doing the things that you'd want to do. So let's work all that out on the mat. We're going to do some, some hip opening. We're going to do some twisting of the spine. And maybe at the, the end, we'll do a little back bending so that we can get into the heart space and just have that enthusiasm. So uh, all you're going to need for this class today is a yoga mat. And if you want to, at the end, if you want a blanket or just a sweater or something to put on for Shavasana, other than that, uh, you could even just do it outside on the lawn or it's a pretty nice day here today in Cochrane um, or just on the carpet in the living room is fine too. So let's get set. Let's get ready. So we're going to begin seated with legs crossed, favorite shin in front. And just a time or two, move yourself through your hips like you're kind of stirring the inside of a glass with your upper body and go the other way. So from sitting a lot, doing um, maybe homework, you guys are still in school, which is kind of hard to imagine and believe, but you are, um, or sitting, uh, maybe watching Netflix, we can get a lot of congestion in the hips. So we're going to concentrate on those to begin with. Take your left hand to your right knee, right hand behind you, sit a little taller through the spine, and then turn to look to the right. Come back through center and we'll do that same thing on the left side, right hand to left knee. Sit tall. We like a nice tall spine when we're twisting it. And then turn, look over your back left shoulder. Do one more each side. And then come back to the center. Take your right hand, plant it on the mat or the floor beside you and then reach an arc up through the left side body. Press the floor away with that bottom hand. Spin the gaze up towards the ceiling or the sky if you're outside. And then switch sides, left hand down, right hand up and over. So push enough into your left hand that you can start to feel that engagement on the whole right side body, through the ribs, through the waist. The waist gets really bunchy when we sit for too long. And then right hand down. Take the bottoms of your feet together. This is called cobbler's pose or bhadakanasana pose in Sanskrit. Take both your hands and hold on to the fronts of your shins or your ankles and then lean yourself forward, arcing through the spine like you're trying to pull your chest through the bones of your arms. And then round back. Your spine will make this dome shape. You can tuck your chin and look down. Do that a few more times. Often we do this from all fours, cat-cow pose with the spine. So this backwards position, when we're back like this, this is how we spend a lot of unconscious awareness time in the spine. It's called forward flexion. So we want to counter that by coming forward, extension of the spine. And then flexion is back. A couple more like this. Good. And then come back to the center. Take your left leg out and stamp your right foot on your inner left thigh. And then reach both arms up and over top of your head. Get long through the spine. Get high through the waist and the ribs. And then drop both hands alongside your leg. Turn yourself a little bit by fingertips coming to the floor. And then walk your fingers just along the leg here. Lift the chest. And on the exhale, breath settle in. Keep your spine nice and long like the heart's trying to shine a light over top of your foot. Good, and then walk your hands back up. Take your left hand on the inside of your leg as a little bit of traction as you open up and expand the chest, look up and back. Drop your right hand behind you and then reach your left arm up over top of your head, expand through the chest and the heart. 
And then come back to center. Bottoms of the feet collect together again. Same thing, chest forward, chest back. Forward and back. One more of each. And then we'll take the right leg out, left foot stamps on the inner right thigh. Big breath in to reach through the waist, nice and long, tall spine. And then turn to face your extended leg, hands fall down on either side. Slightly walk your hands forward. I like to keep my fingertips domed here for a little bit of traction to help turn the chest, like your heart's trying to position towards your right big toe. You can lean slightly forward. That might get a little bit more into your low back and into your left hip. Good, and then walk your hands back up. Right hand to the inside of your leg. Push the back of your hand into your, your knee or your calf to spin and turn open the chest, revolve, and then left hand to the sky. Take your gaze upwards, and then drop your left hand behind you, right hand to the sky, expand through the chest. You can bend through that back elbow. Good. And then let's meet in a downward facing dog. I'll meet you guys there. So nice wide hands. Start with your um, heels lifted. Even if you have the ability to press your heels down to the floor, start with your heels lifted so that you're on your tippy toes and your knees deeply bent. And the reason why we want to do that is so that we can find this nice long liquid spine. Head hangs at the very end of the spine to decompress the vertebrae. Let your eyes fall to the space between your feet. When we have the neck craned and crinked like this, then uh, the neck goes back into extension and we want the head to fall heavy, more like the chin's coming towards the chest so that all three parts of the spine are in a nice, long, cohesive line. Charge your arms like you're trying to hide your armpits from the sides of your mat. Keep integrity in your hands, and now slowly, one heel at a time, start to press one foot down towards the floor, and then the other. Waking up the back side of the body. In yoga, we think of that as being the shadow side of the body, where all the tension lurks, and all the um, aches and pains are in the back side, where we, we have no visible awareness of. So the Achilles tendons, the calves, the hamstrings, even the back, the back of the body, back of the neck and the shoulders, notorious for being tight. So just spend a few more moments here opening up and awaking the back line of the body. Head is still heavy. Eyes are still looking to the space between your feet and still moving through your knees to pedal the heels one at a time. All right, let's walk the feet slowly towards the hands. Top edge of your mat or carpet or wherever you are. Bend through your knees really deeply. You might be able to touch your belly right onto the tops of your legs. And then again, drop your head so you're looking back as opposed to forward and up. Drop your head, and if that's tricky, just bend your knees more. Okay, let's awaken the front line of the body. Take your hands behind your back. If you're able to clasp your hands, do that. If not, maybe you can hold on to wrists or just a piece of clothing behind you. Keep the head heavy. And then expand through the chest here, the pectoral muscles, front of the shoulders. Keep letting your head drip towards the floor. Knees are still soft. Breathe in and out. Couple more breaths here. So this is another good pose to uh, take the body into if we've been sitting a lot. And we're upside down, it's an inversion, so it's good to let the blood flow to the brain here. One more breath in. And then exhale, go ahead and release your hands from wherever they are and glide them up the fronts of your shins and stop right underneath your knees. If that's too much for the hamstrings and the calves, I want you to take your hands just above your knees and then press into your thighs or press into your shins. And the reason why you're pressing into your hands or your thighs is so that you can lengthen your spine. Like you have a little string on the tailbone that's pulling to one end of the room and a string on the crown of the head that's pulling to the exact opposite side of the room. Chin away from the chest and eyes straight down. So looking, peering over top of the edge of your mat if you're on one 
or just slightly in front of you on the floor. A couple more breaths here. This is an important pose for the spine. Provides traction for the spine, just like downward facing dog and that standing inversion that we were just in. And not very many times in life do we find that nice tractioning of the spine. We spend a lot of time with weight on the spine. So it's really good for us to uh, decompress the vertebrae here. One more breath in. And then forward fold all the air out. And we're going to take a big step back with our left foot all the way to the back edge of the mat. When it lands, drop your knee onto the mat. And we're coming into a low lunge with arms in the air. So go ahead, pick up the arms on the inhale breath. And then settle everything on the exhale breath. So always on the inhale, we're looking to rise and find length in the spine and the waist. And then the exhale breath helps us to settle in through the shoulders, the hips, the legs, the feet. A couple more here. Another big breath in. And on the exhale breath, take your left hand to the floor and then wave open your right hand to the sky. We're here to expand the chest. Now, if you want a little bit more activity here, and if you have the ability, you can come up onto your back toes and lift your back knee. But if you want to stay with me right here with your knee down on the floor, that's where I'm going to stay for two more breaths. So we use this bottom left hand as the origin of the twist to expand the chest, revolve open. One more big breath in. Good, and then right hand comes down, and then let's carry the arms back up and over top of the head again. And if you, we're here for a while, so if your left knee needs a little bit of softness under it, you can roll up a sweater or a couch cushion or something and put it underneath your knee. We're going to be on the knee for a bit. So reach your arms up over top of your head, big breath in. And then on the exhale breath, like you're making these goalpost arms with your elbows, lean the chest back, expand open through the heart. And we'll find a flow here with just the arms. So legs will stay as they are. Inhale, carry the arms back up where we started. Exhale, goalpost arms, sometimes called cactus arms. Inhale, reach your arms up. And on the exhale breath, we're going to twist towards the right. So twist towards this right knee that's bent. Expand your chest. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, bend at the elbows. Inhale, arms go high. Exhale, expand through your chest. We'll do just one more like that. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, settle in. One more time to twist. Inhale, reach. Exhale, revolve. So let's end with the arms high, reach all the way up. And as you breathe out all the air, take your hands down to frame your front foot, pick up your back knee, and then send the right foot back to downward facing dog where we were before. Pedal out your feet. We use downward facing dog as a reset pose to catch the breath if it's behind us. And to just pause, take notice, see how we feel. Notice any differences between the right side and the left side. Okay, look forward, lift your eyes, step to the space between your hands. Take that halfway lift pose as you breathe in, stretch your spine, and then touch the floor. Take a big step back with your right toes, drop them, and then right knee goes down to the floor. Inhale, reach your arms all the way up. And exhale, let everything settle. Again, inhale, reach up, find new space, create length, and exhale, settle especially through the shoulders. Okay, let's take the right hand down and then wave the left hand open to expand your chest, twisting the spine. And then left hand back down. Inhale, both arms up towards the sky. Now we'll start with that um, little flow of the arms here. Cactus through the arms, bend at your elbows, awaken the chest. Breath in to reach up, breath out to twist left. So you might be a little bit ahead of me with your arm movement, you might be a little bit behind me, but just do a couple more here. Inhale, finding length. Exhale, deepening into a twist.
Okay, let's do one more. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, expand through the heart. Take one more twist to the left. And then both arms, both hands come down, frame your foot. And this time we're going to go back to a child's pose. So you're going to drop both of your knees, take them wide. Toes will touch together back behind you. And then go ahead and crawl your hands forward and lay your chest between the bones of your legs. Any arm variation you like, you can take hands to prayer. All right. So let's come to sit in a comfortable position. So you might sit hips on heels like me, or you might sit cross-legged like we did at the beginning of class. I just want to do a little bit of work through the arms where we don't have to worry uh, or negotiate the balancing of the legs. So reach both arms all the way up. Take your right, ha right arm and cross it underneath your left. Now, if you have the ability to touch your fingertips of your right hand to your left palm, I want you to do that. If that's not happening in the shoulders, and for lots of us that's the case, you're going to take a little self-hug here. Um, or you could just take the hands together like this. Okay, so a few different options here, a self-hug, fingertips to palm, or you could take your hands together in this kind of a prayer shape. Okay, if you have fingertips to palms like me, I want you to lift your arm bones up and then pull your arm bones away from your face. Tuck your chin so that the back of the neck is nice and long. Release tension through the head, neck, and spine here. Now, those of you that, are having, that have hands together, press the palms together. Pull your arm bones away. Same principle here. Slightly lift the arms up. Those of you that are in this hug position, pull slightly down. Tuck your chin. Okay, I want you to um, lengthen the back of your neck if you're in this self-hug pose. So lots of different places to be. Stay with this for three cycles of breath. So this is the Netflix releasing pose. When we are unconscious of our position in our body, as I said earlier, we find that forward flexion of the spine, rounding of the neck, forward carriage of the head. And so we just want to counter that here. One more breath. Good. Inhale, both arms go high. Exhale, switch up whatever you're doing with your arms. So opposite cross. Um, if you're doing this one, just do this one one more time. Otherwise, right fingers to left palm. You're going to pull arm bones away, lift arms up. In this position, back of the neck is long, chin towards the chest, the throat. I have the tendency to close my eyes a lot in yoga. Um, mostly they should be open so that we're aware and we're awake to the pose. So the drishti or the gaze where we're looking right now is the backs of the, is the arm bones. So keep your eyes fixed to your arms for one more breath here. Good. And then both arms go all the way up. And then come all the way down. All right. Let's meet back in a downward facing dog. And once you're in a downward facing dog, step both feet together and pick up your right foot. Kick it up towards the sky. Tip open your hip. This is like a downward facing dog pose with a twist. So your knee is bent and you're turning open the spine and opening up the hip at the same time. About two breaths here. Keep equal weighted pressure in both of your hands. Your right arm is going to want to go with the direction of your right knee. Keep pressing your right armpit down. Some of you will be up on the tippy toes of your left foot. And some of you might have your left heel touching the floor. Both are fine. One more breath in. And then as you breathe out, close your hip, look forward, and help your right foot to get to where your hands are. Bump in your back heel so that it grounds down. And then keep the bend in the front knee. Rise for warrior one. Sink into your front knee, but keep pressing into your back left heel. And then take the hands to high prayer. Reach up, charge the arms. Stay for another breath in. And then take the arms wide. Reach them out in front of you. And then pivot onto your left toes. Press off the back foot to fly here. So your right knee can be bent if that helps with the back of your right leg. But try to equal your hips here. Drop your left hip a little bit. 
More challenging is to have the arms forward. If you want a little bit more balance, take the hands to the center of the chest for three, for two, and one. We're going to land right back in that warrior one. So carefully drop your back foot, reach your arms up towards the sky. And then as you breathe out, both hands are going to come down, frame your foot. Listen here, step back to the top of a plank pose. So let's talk about plank pose. Start with your legs first. So firm up the legs. Kneecaps lift up into the thighs. And then try to neutralize your pelvis like you're trying to drop your bum. So not dropping it this way. But it's like you're trying to take the tailbone to the front line of your body. Charge through your arms, press through your hands, and then slowly bend at the elbows, come all the way down to the belly. Release the tops of your feet. Take your arms back behind you, palms face down, thumbs are out. On the inhale breath, pick up your chest, pick up your feet, and just fly on the soft part of the belly here. So a little bit like in Warrior Three, where we just were, we have this nice long spine. Some of you might want to take the arms forward. This is a little more challenging. If you want a little bit more pepper, a little bit more heat, you take your arms here. Maybe you take them out like wings. Keep breathing for three, for two, and one. Drop your hands down, tuck your toes, press straight up to the top of plank, and back to a downward facing dog. Remember, this is where we're going to reset. We're going to pause. Take our time before we do the second side. So if you're still with me, well done. Thank you. All right, let's do the second side. Left leg lifts up towards the sky. Hinge at your knee. Turn open your hip. Twist your spine. Open up the left side. Left armpit goes down, left hand is weighted and heavy. Head is weighted and heavy, gaze to the back foot. Remember, you can be up on your toes or you can be down on your heel. Now close your hip, look forward, step forward. For some of us, we need to take the hand and manually help the foot to get forward. And then bump in your right foot, seal it down. Bend in your front knee and then reach all the way up. Cross your thumbs at the top, charge your arms, press into your feet. So this is a warrior pose. Nice, strong qualities of the warrior. Strong in the body, but soft in the face. You look approachable. Good, let's take the arms all the way out to the side. Pivot onto your back foot so you're on your toes and then push off to fly. And you find your own arms this time. So reaching back. This is like what we just did from the belly, where we had the arms straight back. Spine is in the exact same position here. Shalabhasana in the upper body. Maybe arms go out like wings. Have about three more breaths here. Sometimes just playing with the arms gives you something to do. Hands to the center of the chest. All right, let's land that back foot nice and soft like you're stepping in a big pile of sand. And then reach your arms all the way up. And then take the arms all the way down, hands down. We're going back into a plank pose. From plank, we're going to drop the knees, bend at the elbows, come all the way down, heart, chest, chin touches the floor. This time, take your arm bones, your hands, and just bring them a little bit forward. This is called Sphinx Pose. We're going to keep the feet down, press into the hands, into the arms. This is another pose that's really good for the spine. It's a back bend, countering that position that we've been in, doing homework, being on our devices. Legs are firm here, but they're staying down on the floor. Feet stay down. One more breath in. And then all the air out. Let's go back to downward facing dog. And then walk your feet to the middle part of the mat. And then spin. Take a half a turn this way. Take your feet wide. And then we'll come up to stand. Catch your hands on your hips. So we're going to do a wide-legged forward fold. And when we're down there, we're going to take a twist for the spine. So reach your arms up over top of your head. 
nice long spine. Get long through the waist. This is really important to stretch through the waist. Imagine someone's pulling on your hands towards the sky. Let's even interlace the hands and then flip the palms. And this is a great way to get into the shoulders, the front of the shoulders, the underarm part. Good. Now release the hands back to your hips. And just like someone's chopping you right in half, you're going to hinge right from your hips, your waist, to come slowly all the way down. This is called wide-legged forward fold pose. Now if the ground feels like a long ways away, you could grab something like a couch cushion or something firm, a book or two to put your hand on. Otherwise, tented fingers is a nice option. Take your right hand to the base of the spine, like you have this little chicken wing back behind you, and then use the firmness of this bottom hand to turn, twist towards the right. So the inside of your left leg, the adductors here, you might feel that little opening there. That's good. Now if you want more, if you want to expand your chest more, your right hand can reach up towards the ceiling. Exhale, switch sides. So right hand becomes firm, the base of the twist. Left hand to the spine like a chicken wing. Take your eyes to the left. Turn your upper body. Open up your left shoulder. Now you don't have to take your left arm away from the back, but you can. It's just going to open up the chest a little bit more. Good. And then both hands come down. Let's spin back to the short edge of the mat. Left foot forward, right knee comes to touch the floor. Now again, this is where you might want to have something underneath your hands. It could be a rolled up sweater, a blanket, a pillow. But something that brings the mat up to you so that you don't have to go down as far. Take your right hand to the floor, either directly down or on top of something. And then take your left hand to the top of your left thigh. Now, once your left hand is on the top of the thigh, you're going to use it to turn the chest. Now, I'm going to come onto the, the knife edge of my left foot, just so my left hip can open up a little bit more. And then imagine that someone's calling your name back behind you, and you're not sure who it is. You're looking back to see who it is. Look over your shoulder. Now, if this is enough going on in the hips, the shoulders, and the spine, I want you guys to stay right here. But if you have the ability to pick up this right foot, this left hand might gather and collect it up. And then you'll get this quad stretch as well as this shoulder stretch. This is a big pose. You get a lot of bang for your buck in this pose. You get hips, shoulders, spine, everything opening here. Good. Now, if you have this back foot like I do, let go carefully. No slingshots. And then we're going to reset ourselves back into a downward facing dog. If you need a child's pose, you could optionally take a child's pose as well. So we march out the feet here to decompress the um, tension in both of the hips here. Good. Walk to the middle edge of the mat, middle part of the mat. And we're going to spin to face the long edge again. Take the feet wide. And inhale, we'll come all the way up. On your next inhale breath, take your arms up and over top of your head. And then take your favorite arm underneath your other arm. So whatever cross you want. And we're going to come back into those eagle arms. Some of you might be in this position. Some of you might be in this one. Okay. We're going to come down with these arms. So hinge again at the hips, hinge at the waist. And this time, I want you to drop your head. Heaviness in the head, decompress the spine here again. A couple more breaths, releasing tension from the upper back, head, neck, and spine. Good, release that. Come into a halfway lift like you're trying to project the heart forward. And then let's spin to the short edge of the mat this way so the right foot's forward and the left knee comes down. So left hand is going to stay on the mat, on the floor. And then right hand is going to come to right thigh. You can slightly walk your right foot over so that it's pointing towards the edge of the mat. And then start to turn the chest towards the right. Remember, right hand on right leg is helping to operate that twist. 
And if you want a little bit more, you'll pick up this back foot, hand to foot, collects. You have this nice container to open up the chest from. This is called dragon pose. Good. Release your foot gently. Come back to a downward facing dog. Walk out the legs. And on your next inhale breath, glide to the top of a plank pose. And on the exhale breath, lower yourself all the way down to the floor. Now come up onto the forearms again and collect your hands together in this binded position and then place your hands back down on the floor. And we're going to do these um, forearm plank roll-ups to do a little bit of abdominal work here. I know nobody wants to do that work, but if you're feeling a little soft in the midline, um, these poses are really good to help tone up the belly. So we're going to keep the knees down on the floor, but you're going to lift up your hips and you're going to press down into your hands, press down into the forearms, knees, tops of the feet, shins stay down, but it's like you're trying to dome your spine here. Like the navel's coming back towards the spine for three. You can probably see me shaking for two. And one. Everything comes back down. Come into that sphinx pose. We'll recover here. We'll do a couple more of those. Those are really good ab abdominal poses. All right. Take your hands together again. Bind your hands. So remember, the legs are staying down, but we're rolling up the belly. Keep your eyes forward. It's like you're trying to do cat pose in your spine. Keep pushing into the arms, the outer wrists, shins, tops of the feet for three, for two, and one. Recover in this back bend, sphinx pose. Shoulders down the back like you're trying to squeeze your spine. Chin lifted away from the chest, eyes forward. Good. Let's do one more of those. Hands come back together to collect and then start to round up through the spine. Like you have a string on the middle part of the back and it's being lifted up towards the ceiling. Forearm, like a forearm plank. All right, lower everything down. If you want a little bit more to stretch out the belly, you can come into what's called seal pose. Press into your hands, arms are straight. If that's too much, you're going to repeat that sphinx pose, okay? All right, drop your forearms again. Weave your fingers together. Tuck your toes. Now we're going to do a forearm plank with the legs lifted. So lift the hips up. Draw the tailbone towards the front line of the body. Pull the chin away from the chest. And just like when we were in plank pose on the hands, charge your legs. Sometimes we can forget the legs in these poses. All right, press into the arm bones. Start to walk the feet more towards your face. This is called dolphin pose. And then we'll move through the shoulders here just a couple times. If you have any injuries in your shoulders or this is too much for the shoulders, I want you to stay in this position. Otherwise, we can swim this dolphin forward and then swim it back. We'll do two more like this. Come forward to forearm plank. Exhale, hips back. One more, come forward. Go back. And we'll end forward, drop the legs, drop the arms, and then take a cheek to the mat. Relax here. Feel your beating heart against the mat, the floor. This is reminding us that we are alive. All right, let's come back up through a downward facing dog just to cha transition to get to the back. Pop your feet to your hands and then we'll meet on the back. So just a little bit more to go here and then we'll take some uh, restorative poses and then you guys will be on your way. Okay, bend your knees, feet flat and then take your arms up and over top of your head. Pick your head up off the mat Reset it back down, chin towards the chest. Now on your next inhale breath, go ahead and lift your hips up towards the sky. 
Press into your feet, press into the tops of your hands. And then walk your right foot just a little bit more in towards center. Pick up your left leg like you have a ship's mast with your leg. Set your left foot down. Walk your left foot in towards center. Take your right leg to the sky. Keep pressing into that bottom foot in both hands. Now without letting your hips drop, do two more each side. So this is a back bend for the spine, but also working hamstrings, glutes, and back body. Okay, let's end on the right side. Both feet down and then hips down. Take the bottoms of the feet together. We did that from seated. Now we're doing it from reclined. One hand to the belly. And one hand to the, the chest, if you like. We'll do just a little bit more hip work here. Bend at your left knee and pick up your right foot and cross it over top of your left leg. Now your hands are going to come out to the side and we're going to use the strength of our hips to pick up this left foot. So right foot presses into left knee, but this left leg is trying to come back towards your left shoulder. So start to feel that action in your right hip. So sometimes we'll use the hands here and that's fine, but this time we want to use the strength of the hips like we're opposing the pose here. Right foot into leg, leg pulling back in towards face. Good. Step down your left foot. Deeply cross your right leg over top of your left leg and then let your knees fall together to the left side. Twisted roots pose and then head rolls to the right. Good. Bring your hips back up to center. Uncross your legs. Left leg goes over right. Arms stay where they are. Now press down, outer ankle into the top of the right thigh. Pick up your right foot. It's almost like if your legs were to come apart right now, they would fling in opposite directions. There's so much pressure of your right leg coming back and your left ankle pressing down and away. A little bit of core action here too. Two more breaths. Good. Step your right foot back down onto the floor so you can cross left leg over right. And then legs fall together to the right side. Deep stretch for the outer hip. And then head can roll towards the left shoulder. And then come back up to center. So one pose that I don't teach very often when I'm teaching in the school gym is happy baby pose because it makes everybody um, laugh and get really super self-conscious. But because you're probably by yourself, I'm going to teach you guys the happy baby pose, which is a really great way to end our practice. So bend at your knees and take your hands to the outer edges of your feet. And you're in the privacy of your own home here. So you can rock around, roll, roll around on the back body. And that actually does the body a lot of good. So on the back of the body, we have our kidneys. And on top of the kidneys, like a little snowpack, lives the adrenal glands, like a little snowpack on top of the mountain. And those guys are responsible for secreting hormones that are the fight or the flight. And when we're in stress, sometimes the adrenal glands can get overtaxed or overstressed. And so when we roll on the back body like this, we massage those kidneys and the adrenal glands to just give them a little bit of love so they don't have to work so hard. And when we rock the body, just like when we rock a little tiny baby, it sends a message to the whole central nervous system to relax and to calm and soothe ourselves. And something as human beings, we innately know how to do that. It's a self-soothing technique that's built into our our comfort system. If you want to, you can take the bottoms of the feet together, weave your hands over the outer edges of your feet, and just take your hips wide. If that's too much, you can stay in a position like that happy baby we were just in. Good. 
Good work, you guys. If you're still watching, well done. Congratulations for doing about 30 to, oh, I think even 40 minutes of yoga this afternoon. So if you want to, you can come into a Shavasana. That's the final resting position. I'm going to hold this with you guys for about one minute or so, and, and then I'll end the class with you. So traditionally, we take the feet to the outer edges of the mat. Pick up your shoulder blades, walk them in together so that you have external rotation of your arm bones, and the palms are open. And so we want our hands to be open so that we can receive the, the energy and the goodness of all the work that we just did. Heart wide open, eyes closed, nice steady breath. And so I'll bring us back in about a minute or so, and we'll end this time together. And when you're ready, you can move your fingers and your toes and roll to one side and we'll come up to a sit. So one of the goals of a yoga practice is to find this equal balance between strength and, and rest, of exerting ourselves and then bringing ourselves back into restoration. So that end part is really important where we can just chill out. And chilling out in front of a computer or on our phones, that's more like numbing out. But when we actually deliberately relax the body and watch over the breath, um, that's uh, it's sending a different message to the body. So again, well done to everybody if you stayed with this whole 42-minute class here today. I wish you guys all the best and hope that we can gather together in real life uh, sooner than later. So stay well. Namaste.